Good morning, everyone. Y'all are so refreshed. <laughs> Woo! So refreshed. Glory to God. Have you seen the light lately? <laughs> oh, glory to God. Uh, announcements. Two. One, Wednesday night, Revelations. And then Thursday morning, 10 o'clock, prayer service. Amen. Now, I think it was mentioned here while... Go ahead. Study. So it'll start at 10, though. For 30 minutes, 45 minutes. Amen. Okay, you know it's been said that a family lost her house in a fire. A uh, week before last. Okay, who's the... Uh, informative one amen but anyway the church is donating uh furniture we picked up some the other day and financial uh okay So, I know it kind of caught you flat-footed, but anyway, dig in and, and give. And yes, we're taking up a special offering. I know everybody's happy. It just makes you happy inside. <laughs> it does. It's joy unspeakable. Anything else? Any prayer requests? Anything, anything else do they need as far as the family? Okay. So after service, get a, Sister Paula there and Sister Gracie. Uh, she's poor old Bill. Gloria, and get with them and they'll hook you up. Okay, continue to pray for my wife. She's doing real good. God's moving. And I think her being there also is motivating her to get out too. I don't want to be here. I want to go home. So, <laughs> but God is good. Uh, Tuesday, she could barely walk. They put her on the little meal and, and she exercised her legs and arms. That was Tuesday, Wednesday. She walked around five feet with a walker. And so I'm just, God is good. Just, God is good. God to be praised. Okay. And you said, no evening service. Yes, amen. amen. The same with the wife. She had that, it got on her heart valves. And, uh, but God's good all the time. And I bring Brother Leon, you're going to be ministering next Sunday. Yes. He just he just all fired up and ready to go. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory. Let's stand. Let's go to prayer for these prayer requests. Remember the service. Let God have his way. <clears throat> Precious Heavenly Father. <laughs> Lord, we thank you, Lord, for thy presence, and we thank you for the precious blood. We thank you for the resurrection, Father, thy Son. Lord, we give you the glory and the praise, God, for thou art God worthy of praise and glory. Lord, thy ear is not too heavy, neither thy arm too short, Father. We pray for these needs this morning, God, and these prayer requests are 
heart valves be made whole. God, there will be a testimony and a witness in that life. God, that you move upon Jim, brother Jim, that's not here. God, that you'll strengthen his body. God, that you'll lift him up, Father. God, that you'll encourage him, Father. God, we thank you, God, Lord, for Paula and Bill stepping up. Lord, in taking charge, God, oh, Lord, of the donations. Father, we pray for the family, God, that lost their home. God, that in your hand, Father, God, that they'll see you moving, Father, and know that there is a God in Israel, as it was in the days of old, Father. Lord, as you moved, God, in Joseph's life, God, Pharaoh, he could not deny that there is a God. Lord, he instructed Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, Father, so God, move in this family, Lord. Let them see your hand, God, as you would move through your children, God. Lord, and remove the veil of deniability to say there is a God, Lord God, meeting our needs. Father, we thank you, God, for our pastor and his wife and the praise team. We thank you, God, that you kept your hand upon them on vacation. Lord, that you strengthened them and lifted them up. Lord, we pray that continue to encourage them, Father. God, in the precious name of Jesus. Lord, move in our, God, in our prayer meetings. God, move, oh God, in our revelation studies, Father. God, help us. Lord, open up our hearts and our minds to receive of you, Father. God, be the light, oh Lord, to our pastor and the lamp unto our feet. Father, and we'll give you the praise for thou worthy God of all praise and glory in the precious name of Jesus. Every time I sing that song, my mind goes to the scripture of Second Chronicles 7.14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from your wicked ways, Then will he hear from heaven. Then, then, if my people if my people then will I We've got to get to that place. Thank you, brother. At all cost. We have to get to the place to where we push everything out of the way and move into the place of repentance, not trying to just kill the effects of sin, but to do away with sin completely. Well, you can't do that. Then why aren't those who used to smoke, why aren't you smoking? Well, I've been delivered. You've been delivered from sin, then why do you still sin? Oh boy, that stopped real quick right there, didn't it? Those that were alcoholics, why don't why aren't you still an alcoholic? Been delivered. We look at things a whole lot different than the way that God does. 
And I'm telling you something. Matthew 4 has come to life to me in a way that I can't explain. Because God has got meat that we know not of. Yet we sit in the parlor. My wife's going to shoot me, but why should I change anything? Her and I, instead of going and getting something to eat last night, we junk food it and called it supper. We come to church, we junk food it, and we call it church. What is wrong with America today? God has got meat. Sister Gracie, and it still moves when it slides off the other side of the grill. It ain't burn up. The flavor hasn't been cooked out. It's cooked just perfect for each person who comes to the table to receive that which he has prepared for you. We come to the table. Oh, so and so needs this, and so and so needs that, and so and so needs this, and so 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 and so. Well, if they just don't worship like I just got just 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 bye. God has a table prepared especially personally for you. That is different than me, yet we're in the same house. When our personal lives began to take over our spiritual God lives, there's a problem in the house. In the house. As I begin to research this and look at it, we're not looking for meat on a platter, but we're looking for spiritual meat. The meat is there to take and make the bones and the muscles strong to do the job which it is called to do. If you do not take the meat of the Spirit, the Spirit can't do what it needs to. Yet again... We're just another dead man walking. Psalms 91 verse 1 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. To know my mother's secret place, you have to know her personally. There has to be a personal relationship. She has secret places that I know about that others do not. My father doesn't know some of them. Not many. But there are secrets Places in God that the church knows nothing of because we don't want the relationship with Him. The Word of God says the more that we know, the more we're accountable unto. We don't want to know the Word of God because we don't want to be held accountable. But yet when the world holds us accountable we make darn sure that we follow it to the T. We will even reject God to do what the boss says. No, it ain't a can't. It's we shouldn't, but we do. There was a time in America where we stood up and didn't have ball games on Wednesday nights because we were in church. We stood up and didn't take the job because it interfered with the time of church time. We now will work anything and everything we want to, including at home. But we won't when it's time for God Okay, God, you're my little elf on a shelf. Let me put you up. I've got to go be a human now. I've got to go be carnal. God's going, no, you don't. I have meat for you. 
I have meat for you. We say that we love him, but yet we shun him when someone comes around that makes uncomfortable. Guys, I want to tell you something. My spirit cried all week long. I don't know how much money we spent for the two of us to go to Disney World. Give me a ballpark figure, please. 3000 There was 10 of us. How much was that? that? That was more than some of us make in a year. I saw a count. There was 78,000 people. And $3,000 a person. Yet there's no meat in the Father's house. It lays ruins. But yet we have people going to, in one kingdom. There's four at Disney World. 78,000. At 10.30 in the morning. To make us feel good. For $3,000 a person, I can hold revival in God's house and you'll feel good for more than just 30 seconds of standing in a two-hour line for a 30-second ride. My spirit grieved almost to the point I felt guilty being there. Disney World's not going to last. Six Flags is not going to last. Your troubles, your trials, your cares, they're not going to last. But the only thing that will last is what we do for the kingdom of God. And it is coming at hand. $3,000 could have put a family whose house burned back on their feet. Let's take it a little closer to home. We claim to serve a God that heals and delivers, but yet we spend billions on doctors every year. Doctors are getting richer and they're just shoving things down our throat that may or may not work. But my Bible tells me there was a man who was struck and whipped with a cat of nine tails with glass and bone. Glass would be ceramic that literally ripped his skin to shreds till organs began to fall out. For me to be healed, to not take a pill, not put a trust in a... I wished I had one up here. I wished I had one. All right, how about the size of the middle of that? A pill that size is going to cure every L that I have. You can keep the L, I'll take the steak. Steak and L? Never mind. But yet, we have a God 
that that little has no comparison to because he can't fit in a body. He can't fit in a building. He can't fit on earth. It says heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool. He is so big, but yet we fall at the littlest things. Delbert called me yesterday. I, I had dozed off a little bit. I was watching Walker. I, I, we just come in and just <laughs> right down the bed. Delbert said, I didn't make it to church tonight. He said, well, I guess I'll just have to get in the presence of God tomorrow. And I didn't even think before I said, I said, we should be in his presence every minute. I think that's what I said, wasn't it? Or something to that effect. I don't remember what I said. It rattled my cage. We wait to come to church to do the things of God. The apostles took it to the streets. How can we ever see if our shadow will heal someone if we're not willing to walk in the Spirit? How can we stand in prayer lines knowing we're lying to the Holy Spirit and say we want it when in reality, no, you don't. Oh, but in the moment we feel good and we just jump on it. Stop it! God is not looking for a person. God is not looking for a person crying wolf. God is looking for a courageous person. What does courageous mean? Doing what you're supposed to when it doesn't feel right. When you are scared to step out, Doing what you have to even in fear. That is the part of being courageous. And there's nothing wrong with having things. We walked around Disney. Touch your phone here. Touch your phone there. Touch your phone this. Do your phone that. Do your phone this. We are so centered. Around, and one of the rides was just way back in 1900, a hundred years ago, we didn't even have electricity. Well, 122 years now. Sorry. In the 1920s, there was 8,000 automobiles on the road. There was 80,000 in 1940s. We've progressed. In the year zero... That's between B.C. and A.C. A.D., if you want to know. There were Christians turning the countries upside down. There were more Jesus-fearers than man-pleasers. Paul, Silas, imprisoned for their faith, not their actions, their faith were in prisons and stocks and chains and we grip when we got a cold Amen. they couldn't go to church because they were nailed to the wall literally And the, and the child has a cold and it takes the whole family to blow his nose. The apostles were upset because 
There were others doing things in Jesus' name. And what did Jesus say? Calm down, boys. I got, I got disciples you know nothing about. Slow your roll there, Mr. Peter. It's going to be all right. How do we know? Because he told us in Matthew to fear not, for he has already overcome the world. Offenses are coming. If you come across a fence, jump it. Climb it. Tear it down. That's where the courage comes in, the courage. But if someone comes against a Christian today, we run. We jump on the bus and go to the wrong depot. I believe there was a guy named Jonah who did the same thing. God called him to do one thing. He wanted to go do something else. And where did he end up? In the belly of a big fish. Some of us are in fishes and we don't even realize it. Unfortunately, we think we're Dora. And we just keep swimming, 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 just keep swimming. Knowing there's needs. But let me tell you something. Matthew 24, 34 says, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass until all these things be fulfilled. What is he talking about? He's talking about the last day. Mm. Luke 18 and 8 says I tell you that he will avenge them speedily nevertheless when the son of man cometh shall he find faith on earth folks there's a coming there's a coming there's a coming. There's a coming. We want to see the king, but we don't want to fight the battle to get there. Paul said, I have ran a good race. I have fought a good fight. Some of us have stopped fighting. We're just sitting and occupying, and you're in the way. We're never too young. We're never too old. We're never too broke. We're never too rich. The problem is we're too lazy. We're too occupied by the things of this world that we do not need. We got to have the latest car, the latest house, the latest phone, especially the phone. We will rob from God to have a new phone. Oh, yes, yes, we do it all the time. We do not take the tithes off of the top and give to God, we wait till we've paid our bills. If you don't have enough money after you paid your tithes, Dad would say, turn the lights out. You have in control how much money goes out. May not can control what's coming in, but you have control of what goes out. Well, I don't have enough money to pay my bills as it is anyway. Stop buying snacks. Stop spending money above that which you have. You can't give to God because you don't know how to manage your finances. 
You don't have enough for God in time because you're not a good time manager. When's God coming first? You say, preacher, you're beating on us pretty hard. When my hand was going to the stove, my mother either slapped it, yanked me, or busted my butt to keep me from burning my hand. And if we keep doing these things in God's house, you're going to hell in a handbasket, and I'm trying to get you before you get burned. But Malachi said, try me and see if I would not do what I said. Talking about God. I am still stuck in Matthew, and I believe it's the 18th chapter. I may be wrong. The five virgins, the ten virgins, the five foolish and the five wise. You want to live like, I wish I could have the money they got. Cut the corners they cut. I remember one time I went on a field trip as in the band. We went to Longview. We were in... Uh, uh, regionals or something, I don't know. It was marching competition. We didn't know our right foot from the left foot, but yet we was in competition, and there would be 15 people out of step. Then there would be this group over here, and my band teacher, Miss Wallace was her name. Bless her heart, she was as, tall, as round as she was tall. Wonderful, wonderful woman, wonderful woman could lead a band and she would make the comment that y'all were wrong but at least you were together I remember one game we had one guy we thought this guy's he come from the wrong side of the tracks he didn't have the best clothes they drank they smoked weed they did all this stuff they just, they grew up that way. But when the game was over and we watched the video, she had one thing to say to the band. Band, 200 of us, I guess. Out of 200 people, 199 of you were wrong, but you were together. His last name was Garrett. He was the only one that was right. And watching the video, he didn't care how wrong everybody else was. He stayed true to the choreography. He made everybody else go around him. Do you see where I'm going with this? No matter what society has said or done, they may say, and we are marching to the beat of a different drum, we may be out of step, but we may be in the right step with God. That may be exactly how He corrugated, cor cor choreographed the steps for us. Everybody else could be wrong. Make a move. When we're right, we're right before God. That's being righteous. Not crushes. Righteous. Righteous. But being righteous before the Father. And if nobody else wants to be, make them go around. You will never hurt my feelings with somebody in an altar at no matter what time of the service. Because it's not about us. It's about Him. It's about Him. And leaders, I'm just going to say it in front of the others. Until you get it right, no one else is. 
until you shed off the world stuff, the church is not going to. Delbert was still sitting here. There's a ceiling. And if the leaders can't rise above it, neither will the followers. If you're afraid to take risks, Christianity is not for the weak. Let me give you a news flash that I got this week. God didn't call you to ride the boat up and down the river. God called you to be a soldier, a servant in His army. Now pick up your weapons and fight. Not with each other. For Ephesians chapter 6 said, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Quit tearing each other down and start building each other up. As I listened to the guys that we were waiting on a boat to go up and down the river. The best ride there was on the whole place was 30 minutes from sleeping quarters to eating quarters. Put me up, mother. I heard mother say something to somebody in Sunday school this morning. You put Brian on the water, he's happy. He's in his zone. Because we're fishers of men. If we don't tie the knots, the lures fall off. You got to tie it right. You can't tie just any old knot, it'll slip off. I had that little old half pound bass Saturdays week ago trying to set my drag, had him over the boat trying to get my drag set so that I didn't lose another one. He fell on the floor. I said, Jesus, I like that kind of fishing. I, don't, I hook him and he cleans him. I look down, I look back at my pole and there was a line. Dangling with nothing on the end of it. He still had the hook in his mouth laying in the floor flopping like a fish out of water. Are you seeing what I'm saying this morning in the spiritual sense? We tie on the lure. But when the pressure comes on we didn't tie our knot right and the lure has fallen off the vine we really are not who we claim we are we get in line for the baptism of the Holy Spirit but we won't move our mouth We get in line for a healing. Well, I knew it wasn't going to happen. We want God to pour His Spirit out on us, but we sit there looking at, okay, God, pour it out. Pour it out, God. Well, raise your hands and worship me. Not going to happen. But you're going to, have to pour it out. If you want me to raise my hand, you're going to have to make me. You're not Pinocchio. You're not a puppet on a string. But some of us are Pinocchio because we've asked God to do things and had the preacher lay hands on us and our noses are out here because we were lying when we went up to do it. There was a time in the Word of God if we stepped in the house of God and lied to the Holy Spirit, they dropped dead. Because we reverenced the Holy Spirit. We feared the move of God. We feared the presence of God. But not now. I'm just doing it because the preacher told me to so I can keep my position.
God is through playing games with his people. Now I'm going to tell you why. Revelations tells us in chapter 1, verse 7, Behold, he cometh with clouds. And every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him. Well, they're not alive. Oh, but they will be. They will be. Bless you. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. And then I like the next three words. <laughs> Even so, amen. 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 Second Peter 3.10 said, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. The money we spend, Disney World, will be burned up. The church buildings will be burned up. But the souls that we have invested in. The bodies that we've laid hands on and healed. The sleepless nights that we have agonized over the church departments, the children that are coming up in our churches. Well, Lenny, I hate my job. As much as I enjoy the money. I ain't going to lie. I've got to get my mind set on what's important. Not for temporary. For life is but a vapor here today and gone tomorrow. In just a hundred years, those that you knew, where are they? If I could get out and be an idiot for Satan in the drinking and the partying and the chasing of women and the chasing of money and the chasing of booze, kind of like George Strait said, all my friends got whiskey and they don't mind if I share. When I didn't have, they would contribute not a Christian. We have the healer. We have the deliverer. But yet we don't share. We are selective on who we share with. We've all got Beverly's. Delbert will have to tell you the story sometime. We've all got Beverly's or mats in our lives that claim to be at, at the atheists. Who are we? We're the doctors. We're the nurses to these soul sick people. I should have said it like this. 
Brother Dougie, to the sin sick souls around us has nothing to do with the people. I could care less if they think I'm God or not. That's really not what I meant to say. You know what I'm meaning. In their personal, but if their spirit, if I can bear witness with their spirit and get a little ember going from God being in me, that's what's in, His flesh may reject me all day long or her flesh or whoever but we've got to get out of this mentality Lord well that's Beverly Lord you know what that's just Beverly this is still a God's kid He created it it is still wonderfully made God don't make mistakes quit calling your children mistakes quit calling the grandchildren mistakes God knows exactly where they've been and what they've been through and he knows how to get them out and he don't need our help but he expects us to take care of our responsibilities. Number one, Matthew 6, 33. Number one priority. Number one purpose. Number one responsibility. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He told the apostles time after time, take no thought for tomorrow. It'll take care of itself. But today, folks, let me ask you something. How can we hold a revival and bring in lost souls when we can't even get people to volunteer to clean the building. Boy. We can't get people to volunteer to help teach the kids. I'm sorry, I can't be at church tonight. Uh, they called me into work and I've got to go. God called you to work when you raised your head up off that pillow this morning. You have the God people are looking for. He may be your insurance policy up on your safe locked up but you have it you have the means to create Disney World in the church J-E-S-U-S -S. Jesus Christ I'm not talking about making a circus out of it, but I'm talking about building it up just like they did. Every time you spend your money on something of man, you're making somebody rich. You're making a man richer. When Mama Disney passed away in 19... 97, she was 98 years old. She was worth $300 million. Disney parks opened in 1972. Do the math. Yet some churches can't even pay the lot bill. Oh, let the pastor do it. It's his, it's his, it's his responsibility. He wanted the church. You attend it. See, we take that same mentality on the physical of the building 
and put it in the spiritual on the pastor too. Well, it's the pastor's responsibility to spiritually take care of the church. No, it's his job to feed you to take care of it. And he can't feed you. He can't. Good example. Last night, Tanya was in the bed. I think she went to bed at 7 o'clock last night. Matter of fact, I think she went at 5.30 when we rolled out of the car. And I do mean rolled out of the car. But we can't get that way for God. We can pack our vacations with event after event after event after event. I noticed this morning when I finally got my watch to upload to my phone, since some of you didn't realize, I left both phones in the car when I got out at the airport in such a hurry that I left them. And quite frankly, I didn't miss them. Tanya stayed on hers enough for both of us. But the sad part was you had to have it to get around in the park. Oh, they got paper maps. But they're so sophisticated, you pull it up and it tells you how to walk to get there. My Fitbit told me this morning I earned a badge. I earned the India a badge. It's 1,996 miles across India. That's how many miles I got. Now, granted, some of that is shaking from the rides because this thing goes off movement. But there wasn't very many days that I did Well, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, my steps were between 15 and 20,000 steps. A bottle of water was $6. And we complain because there's not free water in the house of God. Tanya and I were ready for a real meal. We found a place called SKT or STK. STK, I think it was. One six ounce ribeye, $78. The sides were $18 a piece. For her and I to eat would have been 300 easy dollars. We got up and left. We went and, yeah, well, at, yeah, in the, in the Disney Springs, which is one of the parks, which is really Rodale Drive for Disney. It's a lot of shopping and a lot of eating. So we went and spent $18 on cheeseburgers, fish, one piece of fish, and fries. She got an order of 10, 11 onion rings, Bologna was $5 at Walmart for a pound. $65 to get it to you. We're laughing. But yet God's house doesn't even have bologna in it. It's already got it. You're full of it. Anyway, moving on. Disney World is built, constructed 
on 26,000 acres. There are 93 hotel resorts with 200 rooms apiece. And there's not a night they're not full. Looking, thank you, looking for some peace. They're looking for rest. They're looking for a satisfaction to get away from the hustle and bustle of a real world and only entering into chaos of another. But yet... We walk around day and night with the Prince of Peace, the giver of life, the restorer of rest, the one who gives back what the canker worm has eaten, and yet his return is coming, and we're still stuck in Disney World. He is the rest they're looking for. He is the salvation they need. He is the physician to all that hails. We walked through and there was a spa giving massages. I almost asked Tanya, could I go in? But I was afraid they'd drain the bank account. From the stress of them already draining the bank account. But yet God's house has nothing. But we go and we spend stuff like that like it's nothing. But yet we don't think about the lost souls that we could be sowing into. Through the house of God. I'm fixing to hit home with this. And I hope I don't offend anyone or hurt anybody's feelings because that's not my purpose. This is not my purpose. This is not showing off what Brian and Tanya did for a week. I could have stayed home, got my $80 tent, $130 tent, whatever, whichever one don't matter to me, and my $15 fishing pole and sat on a bank for free. And heard the voice of God. When you're in the crowds, you can't hear the voice of God. When you're in the turmoil, you can't hear the voice of God. The smartest song Garth Brooks ever come out with is we need to be standing outside the fire. But we have one. He's the fourth man. He took our place in the fire so we didn't have to. He took our place. He took our shame. He took our regrets. He took our sin. He took the Father's abandonment of us upon Himself. And yet we can't give Him three services a week. We can't give Him a tenth of the first fruit. We can't give Him meat to sustain the pastors and the teachers so they could feed us so we could grow. I'll go to a big church where I don't have to pay. Somebody had to pay or the church wouldn't be the size it is. 
But I don't care the size. I want to know what's going on on the inside. I want to know what works, what signs and wonders are being performed on the inside. I want to know what man and what woman is living righteous before God, standing upright while the rest of the marching band is going around them. I want to know where those who are servants of God are. That's where I want to be. I don't care how many the number is. But you get them saved, they'll turn loose the pocketbook. You want to see how saved somebody is? Tell them to hand you their pocketbook. Where their money goes is where their love is. I believe uh, Brother Robert uh, Moore said that. Uh, one of the ones... Matter of fact, I think I heard him say it the other day on, on a KCBI. You want to know truly a person's salvation? Look at their checkbook. Look how many times they go to church. It don't matter. The checkbook tells all. Because your love pulls your life it's time to fall in love with, with Christ again as the five widows the church has not kept her wick trimmed but there's still time for the bridegroom is tarrying mm. uh. <laughs> Daniel 12 1 says this and at that time shall Michael stand up Michael's the archangel some of you don't, some of you don't understand because you, you won't go into this because you have scared of it you afraid of it I don't understand it get saved well, it's just all spiritual thing, and I don't understand spiritual anyway. Get spiritual. Start living in the Spirit, not in your flesh. This Word of God is not for your flesh. This Word of God is for your spirit. It is for your spirit to take over your flesh. It is not for your flesh to take over your spirit. It doesn't matter if you understand it or not. Because trust me, by and by, when the morning comes, you will. There was a time that I didn't understand what I was reading. I couldn't understand why my mama was shoving it down my throat like a chorizo taco. I didn't understand at the time why I had to go to church why I had a drug problem from the time that I was five to the time I was 15 I was on drugs constantly had a drug problem what? my mother drugged me to this church my daddy drugged me to that church mother drugged me to this church to be prayed for daddy drugged me to that church to sing for him I was drugged to church from the time I was Two days old, three days, I don't know, the first week I was at, first time mom was out of the hospital, had church, I was in church. Wednesday night after I was born on Good Friday, I was in church. I didn't understand why. Now I do. Because God was preparing me yesterday. God was preparing me even though I was an alcoholic even though I run around at night even though I smoke cigarettes even though I sold drugs on the side God said I'm going to use you Peter at 17 18 might have been 19 I sold enough booze and weed to pay for a complete sound system in my truck. <laughs> I'm 
not proud of the things I did. Had to carry a gun to protect ourselves because people in those days, I probably did, if I told the truth, I probably did more drug deals for the county sheriff than I did for myself. I knew them. Life was easy. When you're floating down river with the devil, life is easy. Because you're no threat. You're no problem. But the checks your body is writing. The checks your decisions are writing. The checks... Your flesh is riding on your spirit. Mm, you can't afford the cash. And when the devil demands payment, I lost a wife. I lost three children. I lost a life. Under mom and daddy... Satan couldn't bother me as much because I had a praying mama who knelt down on a waterbed. <laughs> when the sun would come stumbling in, 12, 1 o'clock in the morning, out of his mind because he done drank too much, Oh, but look at God now. Everything we go through, God will use to the good of them that are caught. Folks, I know you're tired. I'm tired too. Tanya tried her best Friday to get me on a scooter. And then had I been in my right mind, Dougie, I'd have got one because I could run over my son-in-law. He run over me with that baby thing. I just, boy, I mean, I wouldn't even be tanned. Boy, he'd see me. Bloop, out of his way. I had that scooter. I'd got his toes. Mine's heavier. Be getting ready in line to, and I'm looking up or something. He'll sit, bloop. If I'd have been in my right mind, scooter, bloop. Mine's heavy. That sucker weighs 300 pounds. Bloop. I got him with both of them that time. I wouldn't take the scooter because I pressed on. I pressed on. I pressed on. I pressed on. Because I knew if I ever gave up, that'd be the end of it. Yep. Folks, are you hearing what I'm saying? We give up spiritually, and that's the end of it. We can't give up. We've got to keep pushing. No matter how much it hurts, no matter how... We've got, we've got medicine. Tanya gave me... I don't know what all she gave me, but she gave stuff trying to ease the pain. We've got it to ease the pain. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if we will not give up, when the bride comes, we will be ready for the Lamb at the marriage supper. Because there's a day of coming when we shall be like him. In the twinkling of an eye, he said, that which are asleep. Well, they're not dead, but they are asleep. And they that are dead in Christ <laughs> oh, shall rise and those of us which remain 
shall be changed in the twinkling of an eye. We don't have to wait for him to come. He has already come. Let him in. He came that we could have heaven on earth. Oh, and folks, let me tell you something. When you said the sinner's prayer, repentance prayer, you were changed in the twinkling of an eye. You were changed in the twinkling of an eye. I gotta, I gotta finish these these few verses right here. First Thessalonians four sixteen, for the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Now what I tell you, Daniel said over there, twelve one, Michael, stand up. Ah, oh, what does he say? With the voice of the archangel. And with the trumpet, the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Come on, put 17 up there. Put 17 up there. Then we which are alive mm, and remain shall be caught up with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord wherefore comfort one another with these words with these words don't comfort each other with the world is just so bad I can't believe how bad this world is no comfort each other with when he shall come I will be like him he is coming and soon and very soon we are going to see the king soon and very soon we are going to see the king oh hallelujah John 14, 3 said, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. It's not a shall. It's not a maybe. It is four simple letters. W-I-L-L. Will come again. And receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Folks, I'm telling you, there's coming a day are you ready? Amen. Matthew 24, 36. But the day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but the Father alone. Acts 1, verse 10. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel and said, Why stand ye gazing up? For as you seen him go, so shall you see him return. <sighs> Revelation chapter 20, verse 11. Oh, go ahead and put the whole chapter up, please, babe. Thank you. Starting in verse 11. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens flew away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, Stand before God. And the books were open. And another book was open, Which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of these things. Which were written in the books. According to their. Verse 13. And the sea gave up the dead. And the death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And there were judged every man according to their works. 14. 14 and 15. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. 
This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written into the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. We have got to make sure that we are prepared for the coming of the king. For he is coming. He is coming. I said he is coming. I said he is coming. He is coming. Hallelujah. He is coming. Jude 1.7 Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, strong flesh, are set forth from examples suffering the violence of eternal fire. Folks, the society that we're living in, they're marching in their own step. And people are following because it's easier to float down river than it is to swim upstream. But the reward. But the reward. But the reward. But the reward. Steadfast, hold tight, for the Lord is coming with a shout. That old song, with a shout of praise, a two-edged sword, for we are in the army of the Lord. We've been bought by the blood. Mm. Thank you, Woo. Thank you, Let me leave you with this from the book of Revelation. <laughs> and behind him <laughs> was a number that no man can number. Mm. Oh. Mm. Are you ready this morning? Are you ready this morning? I asked you last week, do not get in the line if you weren't ready. Some of you lied and got in the line, you weren't ready. Are you ready this morning? Are you ready? If you're not ready, then get ready to get ready. It's time to get ready because He is coming. He is returning. And you will be without spot or wrinkle when he comes. Mm. Stand to your feet with me this morning. If you need healing this morning, I want you to come. We're going to start putting our faith to work. Now, ministers that are here, I'm not a minister. You know if you're a minister or not. You know what you're called to do. Let's begin to lay our hands on these people. Let's begin to combine faith. The Word of God says where two or three are gathered together, touching one thing, believing, 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 it shall be done. If there's sin curses that need to be broken, God can break them. If there is strength that needs to be done, God can give strength. We need to stop standing back and being afraid. Step out on courage, doing that which we are afraid and doing it anyway. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Healing. Healing.
Remember, there'll be no service tonight, but leaders, two o'clock. Leaders, two o'clock. We're going to feed you, leaders. We're going to feed you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Worship the King.